Uh, I discovered this by reading Hermann Weil, his 1932 book, The Open World, three lectures on uh, the open world, three lectures on metaphysics is the, is the subtitle of this book. Uh, and then I went to Leibniz's 1686 Discou uh, Discourse on Metaphysics. In uh, sections five and six of the Discourse on Metaphysics, Leibniz discusses the very crucial question, well, the idea is that you know, the best of all possible worlds, one of the senses, the sense that Leibniz discusses there, this idea, is that this is the best of all possible worlds in the sense that God is using very small set of ideas and getting in, uh, laws of physics, we would say now, and getting this very rich, interesting, diverse world. So God is simultaneously minimizing the laws of physics and maximizing uh, the surprise or the wonderful things happening in the world. So the world is very complicated, but it's produced from very simple laws. Um, so, uh, but, 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 but Leibniz says something else which is very interesting. Um, the way Hermann Weyl puts it is particularly striking. Hermann Weyl in 1932 in this book says it like this. The, 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 Leibniz comes up with this idea of complexity, which he discusses, and simplicity of natural laws. And he makes a very striking observation, Weyl put it this way. If you allow arbitrarily complicated laws of physics, then the notion of a law of physics becomes vacuous or meaningless because there's always a law. So that means the law has to be simpler than what it explains. So um, in other words, the way I would put it using um, my area, which I call algorithmic information theory, is understanding is compression. This is my big slogan. Understanding is compression. To understand is to compress. Now let me explain what I mean. I'm talking about understanding in physics or, or in mathematics. An explanation has to be simpler than what it explains. Otherwise, you're not explaining. I mean, observation of, of Leibniz is that if you allow an arbitrarily complicated explanation, either in, in physics or in mathematics, the explanation in mathematics would be axioms, a theory that enables you to prove something. In physics, it would be a law of nature that explains experimental data. And the idea is if you allow an arbitrarily complicated mathematical theory or physical theory, there's always an explanation because you basically, if you, you, you just have an explanation that is, how do you say, fudged, you used to say, as complicated as what you're explaining. In other words, you can add what you want to prove as a new axiom, or you can, you can have an equation which is so complicated. You know, if you have as many parameters in your equation as points of data, there's always a way to fit it, you see. So this is, this is Leibniz's observation. So, the, in, in my theory, I view a computer, here you have a computer, and you have a program going in, an output coming out. My epistemology says that the pr models a, a scientific theory or a mathematical theory by a computer program. And what you're explaining is the output. It's either theorems or it's um, experimental data in physics. And I think of the output as being finite, because in a computer everything is finite, a finite number of bits. And the idea is, so in computers, bits are the measure, you know, zeros and ones are the measure of information. And the idea is, the smaller the computer program measured in bits, the better it is as an explanation. It's not an explanation or a theory if there are many bits in the program as the output, because then there's always an explanation. An explanation only explains if it's simpler, if it's more compact, more concise than what you're explaining. So it, this is, this is the, the fundamental idea uh, that I've worked on and that can be traced back to Leibniz in 1686, um, uh, which was done you know, via Hermann Weyl that I found this. So I've worked for many, many years in a technical field I call algorithmic information theory pursuing this idea, which can be called by other names, one way to look at it is program size complexity. It's the size and bits of the smallest program that gets you a given object. That's the best theory for it. You see, if this is a mathematical result uh, or uh, experimental data that you're trying to explain, this would be the best theory. I don't have time to explain this in great detail, but what I want to say is um, that it turns out that if, that the, the important thing is when there is no explanation. If you have data which is uh, very unstructured, 
there may be no theory that is more concise than, than what you're explaining. You see, if the theory, if the, if, the, if the best theory is as complicated as what you're explaining, it's the same size, that means in a sense that what you're trying to explain or understand is incomprehensible, cannot be explained, there is no theory. And it turns out that most objects, most digital objects, are unstructured and have no theory. The same way that most real numbers are uncomputable or even unnameable, most finite strings of bits cannot be compressed, cannot be produced from a program smaller than they are. So in a way, you can think of it abstractly as scientific data or mathematical data which has no explanation, for which there is no theory or any understanding possible. So I would say it like this. If you have a string of zeros and ones where the smallest program to calculate it is the same size, and there always is a program the same size that calculates anything, these are totally unstructured bits. It's a s string of bits which has no explanation, no theory, cannot be comprehended. It can only be comprehended as a thing in itself, to use uh, Kantian terminology, misuse Kantian terminology. <laughs> um, now, the interesting result is this theory shows that most finite strings of bits are incomprehensible in this sense. They have no explanation that is more concise than they are. Of course, all of the science that we care about and mathematics that we care about are cases where there are theories, you know, because humans are more interested in cases where they, in situations where they can understand than in situations which they can't understand. But if you go to a uh, gambling casino and look at the roulette wheel uh, and say whether it comes out odd or even or red or black, you know, if in other words, independent tosses of a fair coin with very high probability will give you a sequence of bits with independent tosses of a fair coin with very high probability will give you an incompressible sequence of bits for which there is no short theory, there is no explanation, there is no understanding. So this, is, um, th this idea is developed at great length in this theory, uh, which I've spent <laughs> most of my life working on. Now let me tell you the most interesting result in this theory, which I think, we could, as I said, trace, you can trace back to Leibniz in 1686. The most interesting result in this theory, this theory starts by looking and asking what is a law of physics? And the idea is it has to be simpler than the data it explains, otherwise it doesn't count because there's always a law, right? This is Leibniz's observation. But the, most interesting, the applications I've worked on are not to physics or metaphysics, they're to metamathematics, to asking what mathematics can or cannot achieve, and in particular to revisiting the work of Gödel in 1931 on limits of reasoning and the work of uh, Turing in 1936 on the halting problem. It's, uh, I'm sure you've all heard of it, right? Turing's halting problem. So let me tell you about about those results. Um, the two results that I'm proudest that come out of this theory uh, have to do with showing that some things cannot be demonstrated. You know, of, of cases where mathematical truth is, is maximally unstructured and cannot be comprehended, cannot be compressed into a mathematical theory that is simpler than what you're trying to prove. Now you can always prove something by adding it as a new axiom. You see, if you have a theory as complicated as what you're trying to prove, there's no problem. And what I'd like to show you is two examples of mathematical truths where this is the only way to prove what you would, uh, you know, these truths, is essentially to add them as new axioms. So that doesn't count. These are irreducible mathematical truths. So the normal notion of mathematical reasoning, and I can quote Leibniz uh, as an authority on this from the uh, monodology, actually, a uh, very late work, what uh, Leibniz points out, that the whole idea of a proof is that you start, you prove something complicated f starting 